All right, guys. Hey, welcome back. This is Real Estate Uncensored. I got to tell you one thing. We have an absolutely incredible human being that is just crushing skulls. We have Larry Kendall here. If you don't know who Larry Kendall is, you've been living underneath a rock. It's, it's Ninja Selling. Sarah Johnson, she, she was uh, the ex president of the Calgary Association of Realtors. And I probably got that wrong and you're still going to criticize me on air. That's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, that's and, terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Leave, me, leave me alone on that one. And then we have Jake Wolf, president and CEO of Clever Leads, spelled with a K. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats. This is going to be a great show. Here is our countdown. <laughs> All right, there it is, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I want to introduce, first off, Mr. Larry Kendall. Um, please introduce yourself because I'm so honored, so humbled, and so excited to hear you and talk with you in live person. So tell everybody where you are, what you do, what you've been building. What's Ninja selling? Okay, great. Well, first of all, Greg, thank you for inviting me on your program. I appreciate being with you and your guests. Uh, my name is Larry Kendall. I'm from Colorado. Um, we built a real estate company here called The Group Real Estate and uh, received some national recognition uh, by being the most productive real estate company in the United States in terms of transactions uh, per associate and dollar volume per associate. And people began to come to our company asking, how do you do that? And I said, well, I can show you. And that led to finding myself in the workshop business. Um, and we do a workshop, of, uh, our primary workshop is a four-day class called uh, the Ninja Installation. It's uh, Ninja Selling. I'm often asked, uh, how did you get the name Ninja Selling? And simply, it was a name uh, from the nickname of one of the top producers in our company who had the highest income per hour of anybody I'd ever worked with. And his nickname was the Ninja. His name was Jim Dunlap and Jimmy D. And he's the original Ninja. I said, oh, I'm going to name the course after him. Cool. Because That's our, our mission is to help people increase their income per hour so they can have a life. Uh, real estate can be addictive. You can wake up one day and you've you've been working every day. And um, and so we want to balance that out and help uh, people build what we call a smart business. So that's that's kind of the history of uh, of ninja selling. You, you know, you you come across so humble, but. Guys and gals, listen to our voices right now. You have to understand how powerful Larry is, and the information you have to go to you know, Ninja Sells in Ninja Selling, and really kind of dive deep on this because the insight is incredible. Sarah, I'm going to go to you next. Uh, introduce yourself, uh, give us a little history, and tell me why you know Larry. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Um, yeah, as you know, I've, I have been on your program before way, way, way back in the day. I think it was like 2015 or 2016 when we first met. You mean um, back, back when you liked me? <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, so I mean, I've, I've been in the business for I think it's about 17 years now. I first took Ninja Selling in 2015. Now, I come from a market uh, that has probably had a recession every seven to nine years. Uh, so I feel like I've been through 42 recessions in the last 17 years and the market has always been a little bit tough and difficult. So I had, I'd heard of Larry Kendall on um, the brokerage that I'm, I'm with, and I'm a manager with is called CIR Realty. Uh, we really, we love Larry. We love what he has to teach because it's true. So back in 2015, uh, a big recession was hitting the Calgary market where I'm originally from. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, things are changing again. I need to do something different because we had gone through the previous recession in 2009. And I knew how difficult that was for me and my business. And I actually realized that I did not have the kind of those cornerstones, that really strong foundation of my business. 
So I had looked around, I had heard great things about the Ninja installation. Um, like I said, my brokerage is massively huge on it. And I went and I actually took one of these installations. And in 2015, and I know exactly when it was, it was in February of 2015. And the reason I know this is because that summer, our market in Calgary absolutely started to tank and everybody, you know, started to lose out on, on, on properties and listings and sellings because there were none. Um, what, what was worse was that a lot of people were losing their jobs and we did enter into what turned out to be a seven year recession. You guys, uh, obviously I was quite worried about that because I had seen what had happened to my business beforehand, uh, learning a few things with Ninja and honestly implementing them immediately. And this isn't like a sales tactic because I never felt like I was really in sales. Uh, but I implemented how to contact people and really kind of found that base that felt really good. Like it feels good. This was the foundation that, that Larry teaches about. And yeah, the recession, you know, started to hit and I thought, oh my gosh, things are going down and, and it didn't. Uh, and my business literally since 2015, uh, some years it's doubled, uh, but it's absolutely gone in an exponential growth curve since that time. So I've told you this before, Larry, uh, but thank you for reiterating what we think we know, but maybe don't always have the confidence to actually implement into our business. That is awesome. That is awesome. And it's it, it, again, it's not a sales pitch, ladies and gentlemen. This is just yeah. actual facts. Um, Mr. Jake Wolf, welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. Um, I think a lot of you do know me. However, I just want to say thank you. Yesterday was my birthday. A lot of you reached out and said, happy Cinco de Mayo, Mr. Wolf. And uh, it was a great celebration, and I did survive. I'm here with you today. So um, <laughs> that's not a joke, by the way. <laughs> so you know what? I, I love hearing stuff like this. Mr. Larry is an absolute rock star. Uh, it goes back to some of the core principles in life when, for all of you that are parents, you know, like we love to teach our kids, hey, there is a right and a wrong way about approaching different things. And as it pertains to business, the fundamentals, the core foundation of your business, you have to go ahead and start with that in that mindset, right? And build these blocks up. And Mr. Larry teaches people how to go ahead and do it. So if you're new and starting, I highly urge you to go over and hang out with Mr. Larry. If you're struggling or if you just need a big refresh for your business, um, Go ahead and hang out with him. So I'm excited to go ahead and hear some of these principles from Mr. Larry and, and honored to go ahead and be here with all of you fine folks. Larry, let me let me start with you really quickly. I, I In pre-show, by the way, everybody, uh, Sarah definitely went fangirl and she <laughs> so excited to be here with, with Larry. I am too. So is Jake. And Larry, walk me through the group. Walk me through kind of where this kind of started from and where are you going with this? Because I think what you're building, and this is why I'm so honored to have you here, you're going to bring so much value to the industry um, just with your knowledge. So the iteration, start, middle, and where you kind of want to go with it. Uh, sure. Well, uh, the group real estate company was our laboratory in Colorado. That's where we experimented with these things. And uh, uh, let me just start, uh, you know, when I came to Colorado, I did not have a job. And um, if you want to live someplace and you don't have a job and, and you can always go into sales. So I, I thought, well, I'll get a real estate license. I'll go into sales. And and um, I went to a, a sales conference in Denver uh, and they had the, all the big names of the day were there. And uh, I came home that night and I said to my wife, Pat, I said, I, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, that day I was taught what I call depression era selling techniques, um, bone crushing closes, um, manipulation. You have to have 10 no's to, <clears throat> to get your, your, your first yes, grind them down. They buy or they die all of that uh, traditional selling. And, and she says, what are you going to do? You, we've got a 10 month old daughter. And I said, well, I'm going to figure this out. And so, Really what we did in our laboratories, we developed a, a different approach. And so to give you an idea of, of some of the philosophy of Ninja, um, one is uh, to stop selling and start serving. Um, so wait, hold on, hold, hold on a second, Larry. So stop selling, start serving. Yes. Walk me down that a little bit, because I, I think that's a huge thing. You 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 sh you shot right over that, but nobody understands that concept. So, OK, what does that well, mean? Let, me, let me give you an example. If you interview um, 
most realtors and they're getting ready to go on a listing appointment, what is their goal? They'll Sarah, go, we'll play with them. Absolutely. Yeah. To get the listing. Their goal is to get the listing, right? But if you're a ninja realtor, the goal isn't to get the listing. So the goal is to how can I help these people get to the next chapter of their lives? Our, our, the reason we exist is to help people go from the life they have to the life they dream about. Okay. So our goal isn't to sell somebody. Our goal is to help somebody get from the life they have to the life they dream about. So when we go on a listing appointment, in my mind, it's how can I help these people get to the next chapter of their lives? Now, let's say that you're interviewing two realtors. One is the traditional realtor who's there to quote, get their listing or get the money. And the, the ninja realtor is there to help them get to the next chapter of their life. From a, from a vibrational energy standpoint, who would you feel most comfortable working with? I would I, hope that you'd feel more comfortable working with the ninja. I I cannot tell, I'm, like, I'm twitching because I love what you're saying. Um, I mean, it's so true. And Sarah, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't see her right now, she is grinning from ear to ear because she's seen it in her life. And Larry, what you're talking about goes so deeper than just what the words coming out of your mouth, because it's profound in regards to, you know, allowing people to be themselves. And when it comes to the next chapter in their life, um, let me ask you this. Is there a wrong chapter or is there just the next chapter and you're the facilitator in that transaction? Yeah, their lives are a series of chapters. <clears throat> They're a book, basically, their book of life, and they go through various chapters. And, and uh, part of the key to helping them is being able to figure out where they are. <laughs> in some cases, they may not be clear on where they are and on where they want to go. And in some cases, they aren't clear on where they want to go either. And so uh, another, uh, I guess you would say, philosophy of Ninja is to ask a lot of questions. Um, stop selling, start asking. And don't try to be the answer to their prayers until you can find out what they're praying for. Wait, wait, wait. Back that up. What was that word? Stop what? Uh, stop selling, start asking. That is the name of the show right there. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> you get so excited. Sarah, I love your I know. He's Sarah, just... You have the most award-winning smile that <laughs> I have seen in a very, really very long time. <laughs> Well, because you know what, this is actually really energizing for me too, because it's obviously, it's been a while since I've, I've taken the program. Um, but you know, and I've, I've read the book and just, you guys can kind of see this right now. I actually have my Ninja planner, but I carry this around with me everywhere. And I've had these planners since you brought them out. I think it was three or four years ago now. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm smiling because it's reminding me things that you had either taught in the course or I've heard since then. And when you're talking about the energy and the difference in energy that you bring to the table, it literally, you guys, makes all the difference. Um, I'm sure people out there that are listening, you've heard or seen agents that you're like, well, wait a minute. Maybe you think to yourself, maybe they're not the best agent out there. How are they doing so well? You know, and when I say they're not the best agent, maybe in your mind, you know, their contracts aren't as sharp as maybe they should be. Um, I liken it to, to going to your favorite restaurant. It might not have the best food that you've ever had, but when you go in there, you're getting service. They know your name. They're, you know, bringing water to your table before your, your drink is done. They're asking if you'd like anything else. They're making recommendations. They're saying, listen, this just came in and the chef's prepared this. And you just have an overall great time because the service is phenomenal. It might not be the highest rated restaurant out there, but everybody goes there because the service is amazing. This is what we want to do with our real estate businesses. Yeah, hundred percent, Jake. So, taking what Larry is talking about, and Larry, I'm going to come back to you very quickly. And Sarah, phenomenal insight and very easy to relate to when it comes to service. Jake, when it comes to service, how would you, in your marketing company, how would you take what Larry is talking about in regards to um, making yourself kind of stand out and be your be a ninja? And then Sarah comes in and she does her thing. Where would you stand on this? And what are your thoughts? Throughout all of the years when I've been evaluating companies, right, and doing you know, overall marketing audit, these types of principles are so prophetic 
that they work so well. And it's things like going back to being a good human. People love to go ahead and have that kind of relationship. So if you're driving your business in a an idea of service, asking questions, seeing where you can serve, and coming from that as like an inner heart principle, you're going to win at the end of the day. You're going to be uh, getting referred to by other folks. And it's just so important, right? So yes, these principles are key. And I can't tell you how many times now since I've been in the real estate space and talking to thousands of agents where you, you need to really set up the foundational cornerstones of your business the right way with these principles and then go start taking executive action. You guys are all executives of your company now. And in the pre-show we were talking about that means that you are the person that is executing actionable items in your business, right? So you are the executive of yourself and as your team grows and you add more people and all of those folks need to understand how to do this and to have those principles of service. So it's so important um, and it just grows. It will snowball and it will just continue to get bigger and you'll be blessed and unstoppable because of it. So um, Larry, yes, I want the answer is I want yes. Larry, I wanted to talk about principles. What, what was that phrase you used, Jake? Principles of excellence? Is that right? Ex execution. Larry, how would that play into the ninja selling and kind of your philosophy? Well, it plays right in what Jake said. Uh, you know, the, the core principles of ninja, there, there are four principles. The first principle is a commitment to... Uh, uh, mastery, a commitment to being the best you can be. Uh, the second principle is to uh, to stop selling and start solving. Um, people pay money for two things. One, uh, to relieve pain or two, for pleasure. And so uh, ask the right questions. Find out you know what they're praying for. Find out where they are, where they want to go. Uh, stop selling, start solving, start helping them get to the next chapter of their life. The third principle is uh, build your business on relationships. And uh, it, interestingly, uh, a research study, now this is in the United States, <clears throat> and uh, Sarah can chime in for Canada, but a survey of, of people who <clears throat> uh, bought or sold real estate, they were asked this question, did your realtor follow up with you after closing? Now, there was no time limit on that. It wasn't, did they follow up a week after, two weeks after, a month after, a year after? 74% said they never heard from their real estate agent ever again, uh, ever. And 20% said they heard uh, occasionally about once a year. And only 6% said they heard from their realtor on a consistent basis defined as about once a month. Well, that's the ninja group is that 6%. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> one of the terms that realtors use, that is the only industry I've ever heard use this term, and they use the term past clients. Hmm. Um, they'll say, yeah, that, that, that was a past client. Well, wait a minute. No other profession has past clients. When I go to my accountant and I leave there, he doesn't say, well, there goes a past client or my doctor <laughs> doesn't say there goes a past client. You know, real estate people are very transactional and it's just, uh, I did the transaction. I'm off and, and now I'm looking for my next transaction. Whereas a ninja, you know, we want to be your realtor for life. And so if you if you refer to people as past clients, then what, what are you really referring yourself as? The past realtor. OK, <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, and, and the, the research shows in the United States, everybody knows at least four people who will move this year. So, you're, yes, they bought their home. They're probably not going to buy another home for 10 years, seven years, eight years. But you know what? Every year they know four people who need your service. Mm -hmm. And if you build a relationship with your clients, and so at Ninja, we don't have past clients. We either have clients or we have active clients. They're either actively buying and selling or they're not actively buying or selling, but they're clients. We don't have a database. We have a client base. Uh, they're clients. Uh, it's a relationship. Uh, we're here to serve them, uh, whether they're ready to buy or not uh, or sell or not. We're here to serve them. And they're friends. So uh, uh, it's about building a referral business. And so that's principle number three. So principle number one is commit yourself to being the best you can be. Commit to mastery. Uh, number two, stop selling, start solving. Number three, build a relationship business. Don't, it's not a love them and leave them. 
You know, it's it's not transactional, it's relationship. Hmm. And then number four is learn how to uh, communicate effectively, uh, uh, how to communicate with the customer. Um, and so uh, we, we call it connect and communicate. So learn how to read personality types, uh, learning modalities, you know, how they run their brain, how they make decisions, their decision-making strategy. Um, learn how to build rapport, learn how to get in sync with them from an energy standpoint, um, uh, how to how to really connect at a deep level. So, uh, Jake, I appreciate you asking or mentioning uh, core principles because those those are the four core uh, foundational principles of ninja selling. Mr. Larry, I um I love hearing you, and uh, this goes back to throughout the years. I used to do marketing audits. I actually was um, one of the lead marketing consultants for a private equity firm that was doing acquisitions and mergers. Um, what we found most of the time in businesses and just about every single industry, the most missed marketing pillar for revenue was remarketing and retargeting and retention with the brand identity of a business. So for us, when we sit down and audit a company, we're always looking at what are the activities that people are doing to acquire attention from a new audience? Then what are the activities we put into play to get folks to a conversion? Now, whether that means entering their information online or becoming a customer, and definitely what are the activities that we have to put in play to keep our brand retained with our folks that converted. So because we need to consistently make sure that we're putting out valuable information to all of those folks that you just said are past clients. And I love that. Um, <laughs> but I, I, want like them, I want them to think about me and I want to put educational consumable content from our company out in front of these folks consistently so that when they're in market to go ahead and utilize our services or purchase our products or we become referable like that we've seen jumps and i'm talking in different industries 20 to 40 percent additional revenue at the end of the year because we actually sat down with those core principles in mind and made sure that we have good strong brand retention activities that we put out from our company so that we are there always so it's so critically important i love that you are teaching folks this because i think the industry as a whole would be blessed and unstoppable if they activated these types of things well let's, let's talk about that really quickly uh yeah. larry not to not to cut you off but sarah you are a recipient of what larry has taught let's talk about your growth and how that has built where, where you are now yeah, absolutely. You know, what Larry says about the principle three of the stop selling and start solving. Um, as soon as I fundamentally learned that because it, it clicked with me, but as soon as I learned that, you guys, it felt like the weight of the world came off of my shoulders because mm -hmm. I was in the business for 10 years to begin with thinking that I was a salesman because that's what everybody said that I was. And I hated it. Um, it felt a little a little grimy. It felt uncomfortable. It felt gross. It didn't feel like what I was trying to do and how I was trying to connect with my clients. And as soon as somebody literally walked in the room with an amazing program that made sense because I got to be a human, I got to have an emotional connection with my clients. Um, and as soon as I allowed myself to jump out of and say, I am not a salesman and really start solving and having those human experiences with people, um, it changed my mindset completely. And that's literally what I needed to then overcome the market because anything can be happening in the market at any given time. It's going up, it's going down. We know what just happened the last two years. It doesn't matter what's going on in the market. It matters what's going on here in your mm -hmm. mind. And that is what is going to help dictate your, your, your profession and where you go from here. People need, people right need you as a professional when the market is up and the market is down, right? Exactly. And Larry talks about mastering your craft, right? Don't just be this horizontal learner that might know a little bit of stuff below the fold. Get vertical and push yourself for mastery inside of these things. If you don't know it, it is your job as an executive to go down that rabbit hole, learn. And if you don't know, go find the person that does and build it into your systems and then help everybody else understand that. So, well, and it's gotten to the point too, where keep in mind, I mean, I spent 16 years in one market. I've been in a brand new market where I'm starting over from scratch, not just starting over as a personal agent, but as a, a broker owner. 
um, in a brand new market, eight hours away from where I had done all of my real estating. And in one year, um, I've been able to, you know, find these clients, find these relationships. And essentially when you're starting over like that, there's really nothing scarier. It literally reminds me of starting brand new in the profession again. And you look back and you think, what would I do differently if I were to start over? Well, I implemented everything that I had learned the previous 16 years. And in a, in a year and a time where it should have been so hard and difficult, that's not, that's not where I am. That hasn't been what I've been thinking. And I knew what to employ starting, starting over again. You know, the incredible thing about that, Sarah, is this, is that I love you to pieces. And I know that your you know, life is shifting for you in a very positive way. Um, even though she doesn't like me very much at some times. <laughs> but, okay. um, but, you know, Larry, you're, you've been a, 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 a a, a post in regards to like getting information out to folks like Sarah trying to break into different areas. So if you're going to break into a new area, what would be your first three things to do? Well, I think what Sarah's experiencing is what I experienced when I airdropped into Fort Collins, Colorado, and I didn't know a single person. Um, I just wanted to live there. Uh, but I didn't know, I didn't have a job. And so I got a, a real estate license, but I didn't know a single person. So, uh, I basically did everything. Uh, I uh, did everything from uh, door knock to telemarket to open houses uh, <clears throat> to get involved in the community. I, uh, at the time, there was a United Way campaign going on, so I volunteered. I got on a committee at the Chamber of Commerce, got involved in a church. Uh, there was a, uh, I like to play basketball, so I got on a basketball team. Uh, at the end of the year, what was really interesting for me is uh, 80% of my sales came from my relationships. It was the people I met at church. It was the people that uh, I was on the committee with. Uh, it was the, you know, it was uh, only a small percentage of my business came from cold calling. I did, I had a, a, a few transactions from open houses, which was good for me, a, a way to meet people. And I'm, I, I could build relationships uh, pretty quickly uh, when I meet somebody. But the, uh, the, the hard, hard selling didn't really work for me. Uh, you know, the, I, I got involved in what's called sweat hogs. And you may have heard of it, but uh, you have to make 100 cold calls on the phone every day, 500 a week. I lasted about three weeks. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just, it wasn't sustainable uh, for me. And, uh, and I didn't get a single thing out of it other than, uh, a lot of embarrassment and, and, you know, feeling like I was a salesperson. So um, I think my advice to somebody who airdrops into a market, and I think Sarah can, can embellish this is, uh, you know, go out and meet as many people as you can and build relationships. You know, the, Larry, the funny thing about that is that I had two cats and I love my cats, but they died, unfortunately. So I, I was catless. My girlfriend and I got a dog. His name's Sir Rupert Pepperton the first, by the way. <laughs> he's not, he's always on the couch. Um, here's, here's the point of the story is that what you're talking about when it comes to relationships, I have gotten more deals from talking about dog poop and what leash you use and what kind of food you feed your dog at the dog park. I have four deals going right now, all in the two to $5 million range. In your a thousand percent rate, right? It's a relationship. Don't have sales commission breath. Just go out there and just be a fucking. I'm sorry. I told you <laughs> he's us. not. He's not that sorry. But go on, Greg. Yeah, I'm not that sorry. <laughs> but, but but be but be real and just don't give a you know what and just have fun and meet people. Jake, when it comes to that kind of mentality, how would you market it out with Larry's system? I mean, how would you push that out for folks? I mean, because Sarah's in a new marketplace. How can you grow her? We'll use her as a, an example. How can we use Sarah as a growth opportunity? Sure. So technology is awesome, right? Like I built Clever Leads intentionally to go ahead and have a way to get that type of communication and those types of personalities and your service out to more people more frequently so that you're not having to go ahead and you, it basically buys your time back. Right. So 
I love email, right? And having an email system like we have set up with SendGrid on your own URL. Now it, we talk about content creation all the time, right? So shooting good videos and um, just being of service and sharing content that people need to be aware about that's going on in the local marketplace and blends of all of you. All of that stuff is important, right? From a marketing standpoint. Um, Larry, I am a combat veteran. I served in the United States Air Force. I was in in the late 90s and was a non-commissioned officer during 9-11. Then I found myself in weird places like Afghanistan. And um, so, but our Air Force motto, right, our credo is integrity first, service before self and excellence in all that we do. And um, as a young man and having to go through all of those things and now as a civilian, I live my life in that same credo, right? And I, I'm feeling everything from your ninja course almost being identical to living and operating your business with those types of principles in mind. And I, my hat's off to you. Good, sir. I just want to let you know that. Well, Jake, thanks for that. And <clears throat> thank you for your service. And I think we have that in common. I was a captain in the army. Uh, before. Oh, see, I could I feel it. I knew this was coming. <laughs> I Sarah, knew this was coming. Sarah, yeah. have you served? I am sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That makes two of us. I just, uh, yeah. I'd like to ask Sarah a question, you know, uh, and this ties into what uh, Jake was just talking about as far as uh, making connections and maintaining connections. Uh, we have a we have a, a term in, in Ninja that we call auto flow, which uh, to maintain relationships, we want to be in flow with people on a consistent basis, typically about three times a week. Uh, some of that's email, some of it's snail mail, uh, uh, some of it's social media. There's different ways to do it. But uh, Sarah, could you share with us uh, what do you do to to maintain those relate build and maintain those relationships? Yeah, you know, Larry, and this is something that I obviously started building in 2015, and I'm essentially I'm known in the office for my systems and processes. Now at this point, um, I do have a full time assistant uh, that helps keep things in auto flow uh, for me, so that a lot of work is being done where I don't have to physically be present and active all of the time which is great. Um, but I really like to hit people on a whole bunch of different levels. And when I say hit people, it still has to come from me. And it, it you know, I don't like to just randomly sign people up for newsletters and here you go. Um, I like to create and give value. So if they're getting something via email, um, there's going to be, you know, I usually keep it down to three points. I like to keep things very short and simple. Um, we always have like monthly draws for the office that are in there. There's going to be something else of value in there. And then, you know, something of this is what you should be doing right now with your home. Um, so I'm big on that. I'm big on text communication. This was always the funny thing because I'm not a big talker on the phone, but a lot of my clients aren't either. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping in contact with them that way as well. Uh, I'm big on the pop buys. Anybody that knows me or follows me on social media knows that I like to create things and, uh, and I like to stop by, but it has to be something of, of meaning. Right. If I'm reminded of somebody because I'm driving down their street, I'm going to say, hey, I was just driving by. Your yard looks great. I've noticed this. Da, 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 da. Uh, Larry, I know that you're big on having your your client base, you know, in an actual list. And you want to make sure that you're reaching out to them personally in some way, at least every quarter. Um, so I've got it down to this point of essentially five different ways of communication um, because there will be things that are coming in the mail as well, like a, a birthday card or holiday cards. I like to do things for St. Patrick's day and put like a little $1 scratch card in there as well. You cool. want to do things in person, phone, text, social media is a big thing too, of being able to interact that way. So there's just all of these different things that we can do so that it doesn't, not only does it not get old, but it doesn't feel like you're always in contact with people or they don't feel like you're like straining to be reaching out to them so many times. Dude. And so you, you come up with the flow, you come up with your marketing calendar. Uh, it definitely gets easier over time, but that's how you're always staying top of mind. So yeah, I love it. that's how you're getting the referrals, right? Yeah. You're getting the referrals from all of your clients based on that. The, uh, uh, Sarah, that was beautifully stated and, and the key to it, and I can tell uh, how you do your business is that you've put it into a system. So that keeps you consistent. Consistency is the key. And a lot of people, I think uh, uh, they know what to do. Uh, they're hit or miss. But the consistency is, is really how you build relationships over time.
Well, Larry, I, I wonder where she learned it from. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of her. I'm so very proud. Yeah, so, Sarah, the funny thing about the scratchers, uh, my girlfriend, uh, first time she met my parents, she brought a penny taped to a scratcher. And every time someone won a couple of dollars, she's like, you know what? You have to give me 10% on your winnings. And so my parents actually won a couple of dollars and they gave her 10 cents. And <laughs> everyone had a blast with that. And it, that is just staying in communication with folks and being fun, being relative and so on and so forth. But Jake, you're, you're, you're I think you were looking to chime in my friend. You know, I, um, Mr. Larry and Sarah, I'm, I run, um, I, I'm the co-founder of a, another company called Freedom Move USA, and it helps people save ten to $25,000 on moving versus retail options. So it's a really strong scenario when it comes into what makes you different, right? So yes, there's a lot of this know, like, and trust type things, and those are all good core principles. But at the end of the day, when choosing and picking a real estate agent, now the folks that are signing up with Freedom Move USA, it's it's almost like a positive word of caution. You're going to have to pay for this move. Just come check with me first. Uh, let's see how we can go ahead and help you out in real estate. So that's something that we developed strategically as a unique selling proposition. Uh, but also on the clever lead side of the house, I think you guys might be interested in this. We actually are working with Perk Plans, which is the largest employee benefit portal in the United States of America with companies as large as Lockheed Martin offers all of these different discounts and savings uh, to their in-house employees. The NFL Alumni Association, tens of thousands of other HR departments. So it has about a 25 million American reach here in the U.S., people that are in there. Uh, Freedom Move USA just got accepted as the only national moving company inside that platform. So you can save 10% by going with pods or come find the certified real estate agent with Freedom Move USA. The perk plan side, what I did was I asked the founders of perk plans if I can start incorporating that benefit portal into all of our real estate agents. So now what we're looking to do is you as an agent can say to all of your clients and consumers and folks that you've already done business with, hey guys, you can save thousands of dollars by coming to my website. If you're shopping through Amazon or if you're buying products on Chewy.com with your pets or 50% off car rentals or travel and vacations to all of these different places, because we're looking at adding different elements of talking points to make sure that you're of value and of service to folks that are thinking about doing business with you or even their friends and family. So it really gives a, another big leg up. So you don't have to feel that uncomfortable. What am I going to say? You can just keep saying, Hey guys, come over to my website, log into this benefit portal and save thousands of dollars throughout the year by your normal shopping habits anyway. So uh, these are all little marketing things that we do, but it, it really falls in line with the systems and being of service and outreach and communication and and stuff like that. So, so um, there, when it comes down to all of that stuff, what, what Jake just said, it's it's being relevant in the person's reality of, of what they're looking at, and so I want you and Sarah and Jake. By the way, very good information. I love that, um, Larry. If you were to talk to Sarah as a coaching client, hypothetically, right? And you're like, okay, I have all these different portals. I have all this different stuff I can use. How can I make it personal in the shortest amount of time? Well, I think that uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, things we teach in, in flow and auto flow uh, is that uh, it needs to be something that is valuable. Mm-hmm. So, so don't be just blasting people with with stuff that's irrelevant. You talked about being relevant, right? Uh, uh, make sure that you you're doing typically anything about the real estate market is pretty relevant to most people. So that would be an example. Uh, number two is if you can customize it. So they're interested in the market, but they're really interested in the market in their neighborhood, for example. So if you can drill down a little bit and make it more uh, customized for them. Uh, number three, if you can make it personalized. Oh. So uh, not only are you going to send them market statistics, you're going to send them market statistics on their neighborhood and you're going to write them a note on there. You're going to personalize it. OK. And then uh, we believe that uh, flow, what we call flow, which is frequency of interaction or auto flow, which you, you basically have this set up automatically. Uh, 
Uh, a great auto flow system needs to be a combination of art and science. So art is the heart and science is the head. So the statistics, for example, would be from the head. Okay, that would be an example of, of science. Uh, the heart would be a um, happy birthday card mm -hmm. uh, or an invitation to dinner uh, or something uh, more, more relationship oriented. And so, uh, you know, back to your question, how do you design this so that it's, it's the most relevant to them? Right. Those are the principles. You know, make sure it's valuable, make sure it's customized, make sure it's personalized, make sure it's either art or science. You know what? You're so incredibly right. I mean, I have a company. I mean, I met a guy a long time ago. He put me on an email program and he gives me stats on my own house. Right. And I'm a realtor. I've been in 23 years. I mean, I can pull my own stats. But <laughs> when I get his emails about my stats about my house, I'm like, ooh, I completely dork out about it. And I'm, I just dig through everything he's sending me. And he became relevant. Sarah, in your marketplace, how would that work for you? Oh gosh, I mean, this is this is part of the system, you guys. Um, so it works the exact same in my market, honestly, as it does in every other market. There's there's a reason why the stats are so high for repeat and referral, and why referral business is so much stronger than you know some some online leads that you might be paying for. Um, the system just works it because it feels good too. So getting that mixture between the head and the heart uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, when Larry's talking about principle four, which is essentially the communication and understanding different people and what might relate to them a little bit more. Well, sometimes I just bring that down to common sense. I mean, if you, you know these people because they're your clients, uh, you know what personality type they have, what might interest them more a little bit, you know, about things. I've got certain clients that love the fact that on the first of every month, they have a customized quick email blast, but they get to play around with graphs just for their neighborhood. You know, so essentially the homes that are directly in their neighborhood, the exact property types, and they can go in there and play around with them. And they might play around with these for, oh gosh, I've got some people now that have been like six, seven years. Um, and they'll randomly just say, Hey, I just, you know, thanks, thanks again for sending this out to me. And in my mind, I'm like, well, no problem. This is all automatic. But those are the people and I deal with a lot of like engineers and the accountants that love to play around with those things. Um, awesome. Yeah, it all works. It works the same in my market as it's going to work in your market is going to work in anybody's market. I love strategy like that, Greg. That's awesome. Yeah. And by, oh, by the way, everybody, uh, Sarah, I want everybody, uh, they have to go follow you on Instagram because you're an incredible human being. And I want everybody to know, how did you become Instagram famous on your... Oh, gosh. On yeah, your well, I know. And, and some of this has to do with ninja selling as well. So... <laughs> So remember how we started out this conversation at the beginning and I'm talking about 2015 and everyone's like, shut up about 2015. Nobody cares anymore, Sarah, um, because that's when it was at the end of 2014 that I realized that the foundation I had built for my business, which is literally you guys, 98% of all agents out there, uh, was a lot weaker than I thought it was. Uh, I didn't feel like I had control. I was just working from deal to deal. It didn't feel organized and it didn't feel good. And so, of course, you know, I enroll in Ninja Selling. It opened my mind and made me a lot more comfortable with what I was doing and the fact that I wanted to have these relationships. And I felt awkward just putting everybody in the sales bubble, as it were. And so as the year wore on and knowing that a recession was hitting and because I had seen the signs in the community and in the city that I was working in um, coming, and I started to, to freak out and worry about all of this happening. However, I had previously started to put all of these puzzle pieces in place. I had taken Ninja Selling. I had started to customize. I was starting to get into flow. Um, I had an assistant that was starting to help me with things all in 2015. The summer hits, the market starts to go down. And there was a night, it was mid-October of that year. <laughs> it was a Friday and I lost three deals in one day. I had to send three non-waivers through in one day. And listen, it wasn't my client's fault. They had all fallen through for different reasons. One had lost a job, which was terrible. So my heart's breaking for my clients as well. But my heart was also like, 
oh shit, I've seen this happen before. And mm. that is the moment as agents that we start panicking because you have nothing coming up and you're thinking, oh my gosh, the world has ended. Okay. So think of March, 2020. I had that <laughs> moment in 2015 and I'm sure I'm going to have that moment again. Um, so think of March, 2020, the world has ended. We're never going to sell another piece of real estate again. What am I going to do for the rest of my life and my career? And I did what any agent does. I opened a bottle of wine and just started drinking <laughs> um, thinking, well, I guess I'll deal with these problems another day because, oh no. Uh, and what I ended up doing was a Michael Jackson song had come on. I was listening to some music. I got up, started dancing around. My dog was barking. And one of my neighbors in uh, the condo that I, I lived at heard the dog barking, walked in, took a video and was like, what are you doing? Um, and by that point, I was like halfway down the bottle of wine. So I posted it online as you do. And uh, Naturally, right? as, as you do uh, about 10 minutes later, I was like, oh my gosh, what have I done? That's so not professional. <laughs> but what it was, was very personable. And so <laughs> what had happened from that is I started to get a lot of messages and let's be honest, it wasn't, it wasn't super messy. It was just like, what do you do when your whole world blows up? Well, you start dancing. And I knew at that moment that I either had to shake it off immediately or else I was going to go into the same deep, dark hole that I went into in 2009, um, or I needed to shake it off and move on. And one of the happening because of that, and I liken it to because of, of, of putting that video online, because yes, it got a lot of attention. Um, I ended up getting a lot of referrals from that, but it wasn't just the attention and the referrals. I had set up my business for success way earlier in the year. So that although I had all of these deals blow up and fall apart, by that Monday morning, I was back on my feet, bouncing back, putting everything together. And that recession that in my own market hit an incredible number of agents very, very hard. There were agents dropping literally like flies, leaving the business in the industry. And my business not only kept going along, that was the best year I had. 2016 was even better. 2017 was even better than that. And it's gone up since then. So and, thank you, Larry. Yeah, it goes right back to Larry. I mean, that you literally are the catalyst for her business. I set her. myself up for success by understanding and taking and, and seeing a program. You guys, it's, per, it's so personable. It just makes sense. We're not in the sales game. We are in the relationship game. And the faster you realize that, the better you're going to be for it. It's at the point now because obviously, you know, we've got a lot of, of new agents. I do a lot of training. The first thing I tell anybody, they're like, oh, what should I do? Read Ninja Selling, then come back to me. And if they do not read the book, I will not take them on to do any further training. Oh, by the way, Sarah, uh, what is your past position uh, there in Canada? Okay. So yeah, so I was uh, the past president at the Calgary Real Estate Board. Um, I was on the board for, I think, five or six years. I was the president for two of those. And uh, now I'm in the Kelowna, British Columbia market, which is the sunny Okanagan. And uh, yeah, so now I, I, I manage and I'm part owner of the brokerage out here. So if you guys really want to take advice from somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about, please go contact Sarah. <laughs> uh, she's fantastically uh, awesome. Um, Larry, I want to come to you last because I want you to close out the show. Jake Wolf, where can people find you? Yeah, come on over to cleverleads.com, spell the K, K L E V R leads.com. We are officially open as of yesterday. So, yes, you uh, are. We've built this mega machine and now we are going to allow for everybody to go ahead and come on. So, Clever Leads is open for business. Um, I want to say something here, real quick. You, we're sitting here with Captain Kendall, United States Army, retired. And I understand how his heart beats because I'm an I'm a combat veteran as well. It, it's no surprise to me that he's helping people uh, live the best life that you can possibly live. And so I commend you, Captain. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. My honor to be here. Yep. Sarah, where can people get a hold of you? Yeah, you know what? Instagram is probably the easiest. Uh, you'll notice that I, I've, I haven't been on and been incredibly active you for a while. On, I way. know because it's just been, but it's it's been for good reasons, right? I mean, I've 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 been luckily very blessed to be incredibly busy, and I'm spending a lot of time working. Um, next week is Neighbors Week for me. I, I'm listing a whole bunch of properties in my neighborhoods in both Kelowna and Calgary. 
I have found a way to be to be working and driving two different markets uh, built on a lot of the systems and processes that I've learned and then changed, obviously, since uh, meeting with Larry in 2015. So there's just been a lot going on. And yeah, I need to be posting about it a lot more. But sometimes you just forget when you're you're loving life and you're loving what you're doing. Well, I just thought you just hated me and I, you didn't want to post and I, I couldn't see you anymore. I'm like, <laughs> okay, there goes our friendship. Gosh, yeah, no, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not posting. I'm not feeling the need for that outlet quite as much. By the way, how's Fat Max? You know what? He's great. He's actually in the office. He was just trying to uh, get into the door here. Our office is dog friendly. <laughs> and so cool. he's, he's wandering around right now. Fat Max is her dog, by the way, yeah, not her that's... husband, not her boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> not scary. It's, it's the dog. But They're both here. <laughs> I, I want to give you the last uh, stance here. Um, I, I just, uh, I'm I just, I'm honored to have you on the show, and you have so much to bring to this industry, and you have already brought it. Where can people get a hold of Ninja Selling? Why, how do they get a hold of you? I mean, just how can people get into your ecosystem? Or if they're in Colorado, how do they get a hold of your brokerage? The whole thing. Sure. Probably the, the start would be uh, ninjaselling.com. That's our website. And that'll direct you to uh, various places. Uh, also, um, there's a, uh, uh, I, I would highly recommend the Ninja Selling podcast. It's a great uh, show, by the way, guys. I listen to it personally. I got to tell yeah, you, there's two, two episodes a week. Uh, they've surpassed, I think now a million to million, 200,000 downloads. Awesome. It's only been going about three years to two and a half years. Um, nice. There is a, out of that, there's a Ninja Selling Podcast Facebook group that's very active. There's about 8,000 uh, ninjas on there. Uh, they're truly an online community. They solve each other's problems. Somebody will ask a question. Uh, for example, what are you doing for auto flow? There will be within 10 minutes, there'll be 50 responses. Here's what I do. Let me send you some examples. So that would be good. And then, of course, uh, as Sarah mentioned, uh, the, the core is read the Ninja Selling book. Um, and I think that outlines the system uh, in detail. Yeah. And it's so, honestly, you guys, it's, it's the easiest. It's, it's a great, easy read. And it's going to make you feel so energized after the fact. Like I, I said, I use it as a litmus test for, for agents that are interested to gauge how interested they actually are in their own business, uh, because it's shocking sometimes when people think they want to be doing more and then just don't take the next step. So Sarah, I'm going to highlight you really quickly. Uh, show me the book really fast so everybody... Oh, can... I don't have the Ninja Selling book in front of me right now. What I have is yeah. the, the planner, the agenda. So this Dude. is what I, yeah, but I work out of this every single day. And so it takes a lot of the components that you learn in Ninja Selling and then breaks it down to help give you kind of those daily tasks, what you should be looking at, what you should be kind of concentrating on. Uh, so, I, you know, I know who I've contacted. I know what affirmations I've made. I know what gratitudes or cards that I've written. Um, and it just makes it really easy to do that. So that's just the Ninja Planner. There's the it. planner. And then Larry yeah. has the book right there. Right there. That's the book. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's that is the book, ladies and gentlemen. Get that book. Uh, <laughs> I cannot thank you enough, Larry, for coming on and humbling all of us to be in your presence and kind of what you're what you're growing and what you built. Sarah, you are a beautiful, wonderful human being, and I'm so glad to hear your voice. Jake Wolf, you're an incredible human being. You stuck by my side on ups and downs and i love all of you guys guys just thank you and on that note i have a question and this is a very important question jake knows where this is going we have to put put colors on the bow for the show i know that sounds stupid give me a break <laughs> um larry give me a color to put on the bow for the show yellow ribbon yellow all right, yellow ribbon it is. Sarah, your color? Well, you know it's going to be teal. I'm adventures <laughs> in teal estate. Like, come on. <laughs> that, by the way, guys, when you follow her on Instagram and Facebook, her, everything is in teal. I, I think her dog is dressed in teal, too. <laughs> Jake, People what's your know color? me by a color. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go with gold. Gold. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching and listening to this program. We love you. We appreciate you. I hope you got something out of this. 
Uh, if you didn't, I think you're mentally deficient because if you don't listen to Larry Kendall, Sari Johnson, and Jake Wolf, um, there's something wrong with you. But we're going to put a color on the bow for the show. It's going to be a yellow. It's going to be a teal, and it's going to be a gold. Now, this is your most important task at the end of this show. I need you guys to go out to everywhere you guys listen and watch a podcast. I need a five-star review not a two-star review and highlight anybody that you liked on this show so guys we love you to pieces until then peace out ninjas <laughs>